Uh, let's look at something else, right? You know, again, we're going to kind of fast and furious fly through a bunch of these things just to kind of get a sense of the kinds of things we might build here with SOPs. Uh, let's go, in a go ahead and add a grid. Now, this is a particular uh, kind of operation that I don't feel like I quite had a handle on for a long time. It was real frustrating for me to understand. I'm going to change this to be a Z and the ZX plane. Right, and what I want to build in this case is I want to think about how to build some kind of like topology. I want like mountain ranges and, and interesting stuff here. Now we could do something like uh, we did before, right? We could plug this into a noise, and you know we could kind of end up with a a range, a mountain range this way, right? We might turn off the translate uh, parameter on this, the A key uh, to make the viewer active, the H key to make to take us home. And we could come in here to the noise and we could play with some of the parameters. We could turn down the period, for example, and that would give us maybe something that was beginning to approach some of that kind of mountainous topology. That's, that's a one way to kind of get at this. But what I want us to look at is how we can use a magnet sop. So the next thing we're going to add is we're going to add a medit ball. And medit balls are great for applying forces here in touch. Meta, meta, meta ball, where are you? Uh, and we'll kind of see this in action here just a little bit. Now, I'm just going to use one meta ball, right? Just like we did with our circle. And then I'm just going to transform it a bunch of places. There's no reason to make too many more of these things if we don't need to. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge all these things together. Now, you might have noticed that it's hard to kind of get a sense of what's going on here. So let's split our view. Let's open up a geometry viewer over here on our right hand side. Well, that sure is a shame. Doesn't seem like we can see anything. If we go ahead and toggle on this display flag, uh, we will be able to see these things, right? That's that little blue flag over on the far right hand side. We could also, for example, use a template flag. Template flag is another wonderful way to kind of get a sense of the boundaries of a piece of geometry um, without having it kind of show up all together. In this case, I'm going to leave this template on because that's actually going to be really handy for us here in a second. Okay, so, you know, why on earth am I excited about this meta ball business? Well, meta balls are all about forces. And we'll begin to see how those th two things kind of are combined together here in just one moment. I also want, I want to do a few other things. I want to uh, turn the size of my grid up a little bit. I want something that's like a little bit larger here to work with. And then I also want to turn up the fidelity of my grid, right? If I hit the W key over in the viewport, I can see I've got a lot more rows and columns. I've got a more complex grid, and that's going to be really useful here in a second. Okay, let's scoot this merge on over, and we'll plug our transform in here, and whoa, we just saw our little meta ball get bigger. What happened there? Well, if we scoot our, one of these meta balls around, we can see how these things kind of glop together and make these interesting uh, kind of gloopy, spongy forces um, that are combined together, right? And that's that's really part of the fun here of metaballs. So I'm just going to build out something real simple to get started that feels kind of gloppy, gloopy, um, and weird uh, just to get it started. That's, you know, part of the fun here is getting to experiment, and that's really what I want to do. Uh, and I might add one more so this doesn't feel too imbalanced, right? We, we didn't have as much time as I was hoping to talk about some of this work from a design perspective, but part of what we're doing here is we really are thinking about the design of this particular kind of thing, right? We're getting to make all sorts of interesting aesthetic choices about where our objects live, how they create uh, pieces of our environments, um, how they manifest themselves in various ways, especially here in uh, an environment like touch. And it's, uh, you know, it's tempting kind of at the get-go to feel like, you know, well, you're just kind of pushing pieces of, uh, you know, you're just kind of moving these objects around in some weird way and it doesn't quite make sense. But we really are making choices about what we're making here. Okay, so we've got a merge. Let's sit down here. And now we're going to drop in a magnet sock. So our magnet sock, in the first input, we're going to connect our grid. 
I'll hit you, put that in our first input here. And the second input is where we're going to attach our, mag, or, um, our metaballs. So let's scoot this over for just one second. And pff, boy, that, that sure is disappointing. Doesn't look like anything showed up there just yet. I'm actually just going to go ahead and turn on the display flag here so we can see it. And, you know, uh, that, that doesn't seem like anything happened. Well, that's because what we need to do is we need to actually play with this translate parameter. So we can actually use this force, right? We can use this kind of gloppy business oops, to define how much it's pushing against this other material. Now, if we hit W as a wireframe, we can kind of see how that's working a little bit, right? We can see how it's kind of creating little mountain ridges here for us. And that might be real tall or it might be real shallow. And, you know, maybe it pushes to one direction or the other. And maybe it manipulates in some other way. Maybe it actually instead, you know, it does a little rotation to our mess, it mesh. It kind of twists it in one dimension or the other. So that begins to give us something kind of fun to look at. And with our, um, our template flag left on, we can kind of see that a little bit better. Now that's, that's pretty good, but that still is not quite good enough for me to understand what it is that I'm designing or rendering for that matter. So let's add an attribute create sop in line here. And then I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to do what I should have done from the beginning, is I'm going to add a null. Because now if I turn on my display flag on my null, I can kind of have that show up. I could insert a bunch of things ahead of here, uh, and I'd still be able to see that working. Okay, so what gives me that? Like, you just had me add this attribute create, and that didn't seem to do anything. Well, what I need to do is I need to flip this flag for computing normals, and now I can actually see how this thing is being shaded a little bit, right? So that starts to give me some more interesting kind of uh, perspective on what it is that I'm actually making and what I'm looking at. So let's kind of zoom in here a little bit. Let's go ahead and head back to one of our transforms. And we might scoot around this big one just a little bit. We can kind of see what that looks like here. And we could move it around. Now, one of the things that it would be real tempting to do is think that, oh, well, you could push this around in real time. And you could have Earth that kind of emerged and all sorts of things could happen then you certainly can do that. But it's worth remembering, right, we talked about this a little bit, that SOPs themselves are pretty uh, aggressive in terms of their, uh, their needs, right? They're a, an expensive operator to use. They're all bound to the CPU currently. So there are some ways that we could get around some of those things. Um, but in practice, it's not terribly practical to do a whole lot of animation in your SOPs in a given network, right? Not when we're actually uh, doing some actual work. So uh, I say that to, uh, just to bring up the fact that you should kind of work sparingly with how much you animate your SOPs. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you need to be thoughtful about the choices that you make and how you animate your pieces of, um, of how you animate your surface operators. Okay, well, this is, this is pretty slick. I like that a lot. Um, but we're going to move on.